what's up everybody it's Amaya so today's video is going to be a really fun video that I saw Lauren May Beauty do she's so awesome one of my new faves and she did a video entitled hyped products where have they gone or something similar to that I don't remember the exact title of the video but the gist of it was hyped products where have they gone and why haven't we heard about them? And I thought that was kind of an interesting sort of video because I feel like it's true. I feel like there's a lot of makeup that comes out all the time and people really, really hype certain things up and then it kind of goes away and you don't hear about it again and you're just like, where did it go? Okie dokie, so the first thing that I feel like was really hyped up and now nobody talks about is the Smashbox Always On Matte Liquid Lipstick. Okay, these things were hyped to the max when they came out. I actually have a sample size of one and these things are so good and I don't know why people stopped using them. Um, I heard somebody else mention this in a video. I forget who it was. They were like, oh my God, these are so good. I don't know why people don't use them anymore. And I was like, wow, that's true. Because people were really hyping these up and when they came out, everyone gave them like amazing five-star reviews and I totally agree. I think they're so cool. Um, and even on Ulta, it says it's a fan favorite. But where they at though? No. I feel like these are really, really good and if they had been released like a year ago or two years ago, they would still be popping. People would still be loving them. People would still be talking about them. That's when they would have gotten more exposure, more hype around them because that was the time that liquid lipsticks were really, really popular. Okay, next is another lip product and these are MAC lipsticks. Do you guys remember back in like 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 40, all that time before now when everybody was obsessed with MAC lipsticks and MAC in general, okay, MAC in general, um, but especially MAC lipsticks. People went bananas over this stuff and they're 17 freaking dollars for a lipstick. And I understand like high-end prices, there's things that are more expensive, of course, but one of the complaints that people have made about MAC lipsticks recently is that they're really not that great and they really only bought them because of the hype and I feel like that's kind of why we don't really hear about them anymore because people were like huh seventeen dollars for a lipstick that's only okay what I feel like the drugstore has come such a long way in lip products that people kind of start to forget about these really really high-end things unless they're really really amazing and I think there's still people out there that love their MAC lipsticks they're still MAC snobs there's people that swear by their MAC lipsticks and I actually have one too and I think they're really really good I, I'm like these are really cool but do I reach for it every day no do I use it all the time and rave about it no is it good? Yes. Do I need 25,000 of them? No. Okay, next is a little thing called NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams. And let's be honest, everybody and their mother, brother, sister, cat, dog all wore these like eh, four or five years ago. I being one of them. I have like seven of these darn things. I still think they're really good, but I can understand why people don't use them as much. Um, I guess that, like I said, the sort of liquid lipstick, matte lip sort of trend is kind of fading away. Um, and especially this year, I feel like glossy everything is in. So I feel like these are really getting pushed off to the side. But I think they're still a really, really great affordable liquid lipstick, matte lipstick option. I think they're really, really great. And I still use mine on occasion, not all the time, because um, I hate wearing stuff on my lips. If I ever want a really comfortable nude liquid lipstick, these are typically what I go for because I feel like they're not too, like, thick. They're just perfect. Okay, next is the L'Oreal um, Infallible Pro Matte 24 Hour Foundation. And the reason why I think that this has gone out is because people just aren't into that full coverage matte look as much as they used to be. Like I said, these sort of heavy matte sort of style makeup was really, really in a few years ago. And in like the past two years, I feel like natural, glossy, beautiful skin has kind of started to come in and L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte, I'm sorry, but that does not fit your criteria. I'm sorry, we're not calling you back. And I'm sure there's people out there that still love this stuff because I think it's really good. I mean, people really, really like this foundation, but I just don't think people use it as much anymore because they don't really need it. Another foundation, and this is kind of the same category, is the Urban Decay All Nighter. This foundation was super duper hyped up about this time last year, right? Or was it a little bit before that? I don't really remember, it was a long time ago. People were raving about this foundation and people really liked it. But again, it's that heavy, 
full coverage matte sort of situation going on and people just like I said they're not into it they're like nah boy let me get some glossy natural coverage I don't want some matte pancake sort of coverage and don't get me wrong I'm not complaining I got dry skin this is fantastic for me but I think that's why these really really hyped matte foundations full coverage everything is sort of going out. Okay, next we have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Infamous Contour Kit. Famous? Infamous? I think it would be famous, not infamous. Infamous is bad. Famous is good. This thing has been semi-unpopular for a while. Like, even when I was getting into makeup, which was like 2013, 14-ish, this thing had already sort of had its, like, really, really big peak. I remember people talking about it um, and really loving it. But even, like, a year after I started getting into makeup, like three, four years ago, people were even then starting to kind of like, meh, mm, sort of not hype this thing up as much. And I think it's revolutionary because it was one of the first mainstream contour kits, um, if I have my information correct. I think it was one of the first mainstream contour kits. And I think a lot of people still like this, but there's a lot of people that just don't contour as much. They don't need a whole kit for it. There's so many other products that are out that are even better than this. Um, and while I think this is a really, really great product, I think it was so popular because it was revolutionary at the time and one of the only ones in its field. And people really there was a need for it and people really took to that. Um, but now you can get like the NYX contour kit for way cheaper and even a little bit more expensive. You can splurge on this Kat Von D contour kit, which I have, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, I think that's why it's just not as popular anymore because there's newer and better and different. Okay, next is a concealer and this is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Weightless Complete Coverage Concealer. Um, so this thing, whoo this was so hyped up like two, three years ago. People loved this stuff. I mean, Jacqueline, Hill like completely beat the mm, out of this concealer she loved it um, and so many other people did as well but as soon as Tarte Shape Tape came in whoa, this totally went away and that just made me think like hmm there is always something bigger and better but it's really just funny how people completely were like I love you Tarte Shape Tape <laughs> nah I feel like this sort of situation is not that this was hyped up falsely. I think it's a really, really great concealer. I mean, so many people loved it for so long. I just think that something better came along, like the contour kit. Something better just came along, and people liked that better. Next is the Tarte Tartist, not Tartiest, if I hear one more person say Tartiest. It's the Tarte Tartist, like artist. Pro Amazonian Clay Palette. This is their eyeshadow palette that's all matte and then it has those like four duochrome shades on the side. So when this came out, people were receiving this in PR and really, really excited about it. Everyone was showing it. And little by little, people started saying like, hmm, this isn't so great. And I think that's kind of just what happened. People thought it was really, really cool because it was an all matte palette with just the four shimmers and each row was like a look. It was a really cool concept, but I feel like people started to realize like it's not that original. It's not that amazing. It's not that crazy. Um, and $53. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Okay, another eyeshadow palette. We have the Urban Decay Naked Palettes. This is everything from Naked 1 to Naked Heat. Naked Smoky, Naked 2, Naked 3, everything in between. I mean, I feel like Naked Heat is still kind of talked about. I still hear people mention it in videos because it is still a fairly new palette. It was just released in the summer. But as far as the other Naked palettes, I mean, these things were like the holy grail, like bow down, Lord our Savior palette of just a few years ago and I think people have just found newer and better things like I think naked palettes like the contour palette filled a need for a while there wasn't really anything like this and now there's so much makeup and makeup has just boomed and I think that's why these went out do I think they're like the best quality ever no but do I think they're really good yeah I think they're good palettes I mean People still buy these things. They're obviously still good, but I think they're just not as popular and as hyped now because there's so much out there. And things, yes, have gotten better. Okay, this is a 
item that I actually am guilty of forgetting about and it kind of gave me some inspiration for this eye look today because I'm wearing this palette on my eyes. This is the Too Faced Sweet Peach Eyeshadow Palette. This is not like that all matte peachy one, no, no, no. This is the original Sweet Peach Palette. Um, so I have this palette, to be totally honest, I really forgot about it too. I feel like palettes just started popping out everywhere and I started buying a ton of them as well and I feel like this one was like really really cool and really really good like in the spring and I liked it and it's definitely a springy sort of palette and then I just kind of forgot about it as I got newer palettes and I went back and used it today and I was like geez I really like this thing I need to use this more often I love so many shades in there and while I do have other palettes that I like better this is not a bad palette by any means and I feel like people really hyped this up again and then just kind of forgot about it okay next is another foundation this is the Giorgio Armani luminous silk foundation how many times have you heard that in a YouTube video. People used to be obsessed with this foundation. Um, Jaclyn Hill used to be totally obsessed with this foundation and I think people still use it um, but this thing is $64 for a foundation and foundations that are drugstore and like middle of the line um, like 20 something bucks have gotten so much better and I feel as though there are a lot of foundations similar to this one that you can get for a lower end price or at least not 64 bucks. Um, and again, there's just new things coming out, so I feel like people are just kind of discovering new things. And last but not least, we have the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfectors. So if you guys don't know what these things are, I shall show you. They are these things. If you don't know what these are, you've been living under a rock, or this is the first YouTube video you've ever watched. Um, these things were hyped like cray cray. And they're great. I think they're awesome, but to be totally honest, this is my champagne pop, right? I love it. This is my Ofra Rodeo Drive, and I kind of like it a little bit more. This is my Maybelline Drugstore Molten Gold Master Chrome Highlight, and dare I say I like this even a little bit better. And if I'm gonna spend like eight, nine, ten bucks, whatever the heck this thing is, or 38 bucks. I think the thing with Becca highlighters is that there are new things that are cheaper and drugstore is getting better at their highlighters and other brands are coming out with more highlighters. So these aren't the only ones that are of amazing quality with amazing shine and amazing sparkle. Um, there are ones that are better or even the same for a different price. 38 bucks is not the most expensive highlighter, but I just feel like there's a lot of different types of highlighters out there now. And so these ones just kind of get lost in people's collections. Do I still love them? Heck yes, I love my Champagne Pop. I love my Prosecco Pop from time to time. I love these things. They're so good. People still love Opal. People still love Moonstone. They're not forgotten forever. They're just not talked about as much. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying that I think there's new things and people just talk about those more. Whew! So I have talked a whole heck of a lot and now you can hear me stop yay it's the best part of your day so yeah that's it for this video you guys i hope you guys like it please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already let me know if you agree with my opinions on any of these products um if you still have them and you still use them and you still love them tell me why if you don't use them anymore also tell me why i want to know um so yeah i will see you guys in my next video Mwah. bye it's delicious.